NAD levels decrease during aging, and a major reason for that is because of CD38, which directly degrades NAD. Well, can we bypass CD38's effects on NAD by supplementing with nicotinamide riboside, NR, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN? So uh, why would we think that? Well, NR is converted to NMN, which is converted into NAD. So by supplementing with NR or NMN, one would expect higher levels of NAD. Well, maybe not. So why maybe not? Because CD38 degrades NR. So mice that were ejected into the abdominal cavity, so IP injection, uh, and then NR levels were uh, uh, followed over time. Uh, in this case, shown in the y, uh, on the x-axis, uh, you know, 30 minutes after injection, 75 minutes, and 150 minutes after injection with NR. And what we can see is that in the wild-type animals, which have CD38, NR levels rapidly decline. In contrast, CD38 knockout animals, mice that do not have CD38 anywhere in their body, we can see that NR uh, levels are stable over time. So that suggests, or strongly su suggests, that CD38 degrades NR. Well, in that situation, it isn't just NR that's getting degraded. The uh, NMN and NAD are also uh, lower in animals that have CD38. So um, what about NMN? What if we just give NMN uh, supplement, supplementation to uh, to mice. What happens? So it's a similar story to the NR uh, NR story, where we can see that uh, the wild type animals have a rapid decline in NMN levels, in uh, in contrast to the CD38 knockout animals, which have higher levels of NMN when compared with the wild type. So CD38 degrades NMN. So for maximal efficiency of NR and NMN supplementation on NAD levels, having low levels of CD38 is going to be important. Now, if everything I just showed was uh, a major part of the story, why is it that when considering that CD38 degrades NR, why wasn't NAD uh, reduced or why wasn't there no change, at worst no change, for NAD levels in this NR supplementation study? And I've shown the important data from that study here where 1,000 milligrams a day of NR increased NAD levels. However, in two other studies, NR supplementation did not increase NAD. So first and left, they supplemented uh, subjects with 2,000 milligrams a day of NR, but NAD levels were not different when compared with uh, placebo. Similarly, in the uh, image to the right, uh, adding 1,000 milligrams or supplementing with 1,000 milligrams a day of NR didn't change NAD levels either. So what's different between these three studies? Why would it work in one situation but not in two others? So the BMI in the first study was 24, which is considered uh, normal weight. Uh, normal weight is considered uh, BMI less than 25. In contrast, in the study to the left, the BMI was 30, which is uh, defined as obese. And similarly, also obese in the other study, 33. So for whatever reason, NR supplementation did not work in the obese subjects uh, when compared with the normal weight or lean subjects. So what does obesity have to do with the NAD story? So first, uh, what we're looking at is serum uh, endotoxin activity uh, sorted by uh, BMI. So the white bars are in normal weight with an average BMI of 23 kilograms per meter squared. And uh, the, the gray bars, the shaded bars, uh, the subjects had a BMI of 30, which is uh, defined as obese. And what we can see is that the obese subjects had significantly higher uh, levels of endotoxin. So what is endotoxin? Why is that important? What does that have to do with this uh, CD38 and NAD story? Um, so first, endotoxin, which is also known as lipopolysaccharide, or LPS, is found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. And uh, just to illustrate uh, what that means and where it is, so uh, this is the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria, and then this is the outer membrane, and you can see that the shapes, the blue shapes, are uh, lipopolysaccharide, a metabolite that's anchored to the outer membrane of bacteria. So what does LPS have to do with the CD38 story? Well, in macrophages that are exposed to LPS, uh, after 24 hours, we can see a five-fold increase in this is CD38 uh, gene expression. So gene expression in macrophages is five-fold increase uh, following exposure to LPS for 24 hours. And after 48 hours that the macrophages are exposed to LPS, it's uh, CD38 gene expression is seven-fold increase. Now, I didn't show it here, but also uh, uh, CD38 gene expression isn't just increased, but CD38 is then released from the macrophages in response to LPS. So then higher, higher systemic levels of CD38 can go and inhibit NAD metabolism anywhere, uh, which is a bad thing. 
So with all of these data I just showed you, with obesity, there's increased circulating uh, LPS, and then potentially, when considering the link between LPS and CD38 gene expression, increased CD38, would that explain why there was no effect of NR supplementation on NAD levels in the two studies that had obese subjects? So what does this have to do with aging? Uh, we all care about aging, I care about aging, so what does it have to do with aging? Well, LPS e increases during aging. Uh, first, in mice, we're looking at plasma endotoxin levels, which is, again, LPS. In uh, young mice, YM, versus adult mice. And the young mice are four months, so maximum lifespan of mice is 40 months. So this is one twelfth of the lifespan, so this is like uh, data in 12-year-olds. And the adult mice were 18 months of age. Again, 18 divided by 40 is, is uh, in, in equivalent terms for a human, 120-year uh, lifespan is a, about a 54-year-old uh, subject. So we're comparing 12-year-olds with 54, you know, around middle-aged. And we can see around a two-fold increase in the middle-aged uh, mice when compared with uh, young. Similar, similarly, LPS increases during aging in, uh, in people. So we're looking at plasma endotoxin uh, levels. Uh, in young 26 year olds versus older adults 74 year olds and again about a two-fold increase in old versus young so when considering these data age-related increase for LPS potentially increased CD38 expression would we then have a decreased efficacy for NR and NMN supplementation on NAD levels so when considering the effects of LPS on CD38 which interventions reduce LPS and uh, I'm just going to show data for CR, calorie restriction here, because that's the gold standard for lifespan extension. Uh, animals, mice that are uh, uh, calorie restricted don't live a maximum of 40 months. They live 50 months. So, uh, you know, a 25% lifespan increase or, or, around, or around that. So uh, one mechanism for that lifespan extension may involve that uh, calorie restricted mice, CR, have lower levels of serum endotoxin as shown here. So when compared with the ad-lib mice, meaning they eat as much as they want, uh, animals that ate, or mice that ate 40% fewer calories had about half the serum endotoxin levels. So with this in mind, CR decreases LPS, potentially having low CD38 levels. Would that lead to maximized NAD levels in calorie-restricted mice and humans? So I couldn't find any randomized uh, controlled trials using calorie restriction and then uh, measurement of NAD, but in in uh, you know yeast and worms and other model organisms, calorie restricted is calorie restriction is well documented to increase NAD. So I'd posit that one mecha mechanism for that may involve calorie restriction's ability to reduce uh, systemic levels of LPS. Now, when considering that the LPS CD38 story, another interesting hypothesis is that calorie restriction plus NR or NMN would we get further increased NAD and or maximized NAD as high as the system could get for that. So that's all I've got for now. Uh, you can find me lots of places online. Have a great day.